the left wing media is having a full on just Fukushima style nuclear meltdown right now. And it's it's something to behold. So this was the big news today. This is our this is our lead in for the show. Uh, Joe Scarborough, you guys know these two? You, you guys know these two? I'm sure some of you go, who the fuck are you talking about? I don't watch MSNBC, let alone at eight in the morning. And we'll talk about that too. I don't know who's watching this shit. I don't know who's watching this shit. They get paid like a lot of people are watching this shit. A lot. But so uh, today on Morning Joe, who uh, famously, you'll remember uh, Morning Joe and Mika Brzezinski, uh, potentially a last name more difficult to pronounce than mine. How many how many uh, consonants is this in a row? A lot of, I mean, I guess Ys don't count. But, tough name. But anyways, so they're taking a lot of heat today. This is the big, big story. Because they... Uh, if you remember them from two weeks ago, famously said Donald Trump is a fascist and a second coming of Adolf Hitler. The very, the the Adolf Hitler you all know. I know you're thinking of that Adolf Hitler, that Adolf Hitler. They said that guy, if he wins, we're fucked. And they're right. Pardon my language. It's not that kind of show. I, I honestly talk about like, what is this? This isn't terrestrial radio. This is YouTube. Fuck shit ass. See, I can just say it, right? But they they were telling us that we're in a lot of trouble. Turns out they're actually the ones who are in a lot of trouble. They were telegraphing it, if you will. They were projecting um, their own bullshit onto us because they saw the tea leaves and they saw, you know what? We're actually in a lot of trouble if this guy wins only because we've been so wrong. Everything we said has been wrong. And what are we going to do if he wins? But they were like, we're the mainstream media. Everybody watches us. We don't have anything to worry about. He's not going to win again, right? Surely they're not going to elect him again. Bang, he wins, right? And so they go and meet with him this Friday. They go and have a little meeting with him. Uh This Friday, just to, you know, bury the hatchet. I guess that's what it would be, right? Bury the hatchet. Just say, hey, man, no hard feelings about all that Hitler stuff. We just want to we just want to be cool. If you start, you know, because you have said that you were going to be prosecuting your opponents, the people who wronged you. So we just want to be like, hey, we're Hulk Hogan. This is, you know. Joe Scarborough on TV and Joe Scarborough in real life. Those are two different people. This is kayfabe going on right here. We're just doing a bit, right? So they go meet with him in person at Mar-a-Lago. Still haven't been invited there. Crazy. They go meet with him and everybody's pissed. Everybody is so mad. And they were just throwing a Hail Mary, you know? We all saw that Washington Commanders game. Some of us did maybe. I don't know. But people are not happy happy with them for even you not you didn't even go meet with Hitler you flew to Germany to do it what were you thinking by the way how awkward must that have been like I don't know because you know Trump is like hey they want to meet with me this will be fucking weird like you ever like had like a you know you're in a weird relationship with a lady or a man if you're gay or a woman, if you're not gay. And then things don't end well. She calls you the worst shit imaginable. She goes, you're a small dick, broke ass loser, and you'll never amount to anything. And she just says, she goes, your parents are ugly. Your family's ugly. You got bad genetics. You're going bald. You're fat. At just every horrible thing she says to you. And then a couple weeks later, she goes, hey, heard you got that promotion. 
kind of behind on my rent. You want to you want to meet up and you go Yeah. I do want to meet up. I kind of want to see how this might go. I'm curious. Cuz I wasn't expecting to hear from you. Of all people, I wasn't expecting to hear from you. But so Trump is, you know, decides he's going to be the bigger man. I mean, things are going pretty good for him. Got to concede. Things are going pretty good for him. It's like, yeah, what it'll hurt. He's, he's, you know, he sees things pretty far ahead, too. So he goes, yeah, this is not going to go over well for you. You know, maybe if you're going to come here and just beg for me to not prosecute you, maybe you find a little soft spot in my heart. Maybe I spare you. Maybe. But he's like, when people find out about this, they're not going to like this. You're already dwindling MSNBC ratings. Right. And I know the three of them were friends before Trump was in politics. But again, you know, like, it's not even like, you know, called the girlfriend said you're, you had a small dick and you were bald and fat and all that stuff. No, she had a cable news show and she said it every day for like eight years. It wasn't like one thing we go, oh, she was, you know what? She was kind of angry. You know, women, they get emotional. You know, you do. Right? It's not one of those things. It's every fucking day saying it, right? And it was to the the point too, you know, where they were saying all this stuff. And then two different people kind of tried to kill Trump. Now, one guy, he was just milling about might have just been hunting for gators on the golf course but the other one thomas matthew crooks he tried to kill him and he almost succeeded now you might think fair enough if you think this i kind of think this it wasn't some person who was just radicalized by the rhetoric they read on msnbc it was probably some people in the deep state who are trying to avoid exactly what is happening right now trump back in power doing crazy shit right but a lot of pe- people are calling MSNBC MAGA and MAGA SNBC right now. That's how bad it's getting for them. So whoever's still watching, I guess they're really just trying to whittle it down to the diehards, you know? Because, you know, when those 25,000 people are left watching your show, those are the diehards. Those are the people where when you write a book and you're at a, a Borders do they have borders still? I don't know. I'm from Canada, so we have chapters. I guess Barnes & Noble would be the American. And you go, are you doing a book signing? You know those 25,000 people. They're going to sign up. They're going to wait in line. They're going to buy your book. They're going to take a photo with you, and they're going to be excited, right? But over on this, uh, this new liberal answer to uh, X, formerly known as Twitter, which is one of my least favorite things about him changing uh, Twitter to X is now when it's ever referred to in print, they always say X formerly known as Twitter. People are fucking melting down. They cannot believe because they're, you know, it's just your favorite team. You know, you're, it's just, this is a team sport thing where they just, your team just let you down so bad. You're a Yankees fan, you know, and then the Yankees lose to the Dodgers and then you flip on the TV and what the hell? Aaron Judge was having a beer with Shohei Otani. They were playing Russian roulette, gambling at 4.30 in the morning. Like it's the goddamn deer hunter. And you go, you're not supposed to do that. I thought you guys were supposed to hate each other. Right? But MSNBC and CNN's ratings are absolutely tanking. Like they are tanking. And, you know, I guess the most fair thing to say was it's just a business decision. You know, the execs at MSNBC go, hey, you got to go patch things over. And I don't know who this could even help. I don't know. Uh, Mark, Mark, uh, lovely producer Mark says, we used to have a borders in the USA, but B and Barnes and Noble, shut them down. Good for you, Barnes and Noble. Would have just crushed the competition just like Trump would do, right? That's what he would do. He would just buy them and say, you're done. Right. But again, this is probably just like a business decision where their executives are saying, hey, you know, just go just go make amends here. Maybe some people who like Trump will watch MSNBC now. Maybe they'll watch you and they'll they'll watch Rachel Maddow. Like but like ironically, it's funny, you know, and they'll watch Ari Melber. 
or whatever the fuck, whoever that is. Right? And so they, they did this. It's not going to work. This is, this is just absolute desperation. I haven't... You don't really get to see... This is like Sam Bankman Freed levels of desperation where you're going all around and being like, hey, I got all these deals to make. I think I might be able to save this place. Right? But who... Like, who's... Well, going over because the thing is, I I'm actually curious who was an MSNBC viewer because Fox News has had a huge spike, MSNBC, CNN tanking. I could see some people going over from CNN because CNN's kind of trying to go back to the middle. They have a bunch of conservative people on there, Scott Jennings, some other people, and it's not the worst thing to watch. I I won't lie. It's I mean it used to be CNN when it was just all just a left wing circle jerk. Tough watch. Tough watch. But they brought those guys on. Not bad. But again, there's there's this thing called audience capture. I don't know if you're familiar with this. Essentially, the, the best example of this would be the YouTube, YouTuber Nikado Avocado, who some of you are fa- uh, familiar with. He started off as like a vegan. And then he started eating food and everybody's like, yeah, we like this. Yeah, yeah more, more food. We want you to just stuff... Your fat fucking face. Well, it wasn't fat when it started, right? But they're like, just stuff your face. Because once RFK Jr. is head of the HHS, you're not going to be allowed to do that. Mukbangs? That's just going to be illegal. We're going to be doing like, there's going to be, it'll be like porn theaters at Times Square in the 80s and 70s. Where you're going to have to, if you want to watch a mukbang, once RFK Jr. gets confirmed... You're going to have to go to like a little fucking seedy theater. You're going to walk in through like a video store and go all the way to the back. And then like this little partition thing opens like a limo from the 80s. And there's just some fucking chick or some dude just just feeding, just shoveling food into their face. And, you know, and then you come back a month later and you just watch them get progressively fatter. But that's what it's going to be like. This is this is this is Trump's America. We're mukbanging in old porn theaters. That's what it's going to be, right? But so this audio audience capture thing, basically, uh, like, he he let his audience dictate. He goes, oh, this is the stuff they like. And then he just ate himself to the point of being 400 pounds. I don't think... He, they said he lost weight or whatever, but anyways. It's not the point. The point is that you, you build an audience, you can't just move around like that. It, it You know, fucking... Law and Order can't say, hey, you know what? We should be a comedy show now. No. Nobody watches Law and Order for the jokes. I mean, there were some funny, remember the famous Ice-T thing where it's like, you're gay. That was funny. But for the most part, you're not a comedy show. You can't just move around like that. Here are here are some of the ratings, which is, this is, uh, this is just an interesting insight into who even watches any mainstream media, left or right. So, this is from last week. Uh, this was, or, yeah, this is the most recent ratings. This is um, uh, last, or no, I guess this would be two weeks ago now. I don't know if they have, I couldn't find them for last week. MSNBC gets, uh, during the day, 62,000 25 to 54 year old viewers per episode. CNN gets 81,000. Fox gets 329,000. This is 25 to 44. This is the only thing they care about, right? They don't care about 18-year-olds watching their show. They don't care about 16. They don't care about that. Those people don't buy anything. This whole game is you show someone an ad, they buy something, right? And people over 54 years old, I guess they're buying, I don't even, it's probably too late to buy health insurance or maybe health insurance, but like life insurance. You're like, well, you're fucking going to be almost dead soon. Right, so you have 62K, 81,000 for CNN. CNN. Uh, Primetime MSNBC, 61K in that 25 to 50 year old slot. CNN, a little boost, 93,000. Fox, 522,000. Okay. Totals, these are totals. So this is the most interesting part, okay? 622,000 during the day for MSNBC, 636,000 at prime time. So basically, 500. What's that? 90? What's that? 62,000 minus 62, 622? So you're talking, that's uh, 10% of their audience is under the age of 54. Like the people who watch this shit are, and the same with CNN, same with Fox. Fox is uh, 3.7 million in primetime. 
for uh, viewers versus 522,000 of them are under the age of 54 years old. So if you ever wonder who watches this shit, because you don't, nobody's watching this. I mean, if you did watch that shit, you'd be watching, I don't know what's on right now, Anderson Cooper? I have no idea. But you'd be watching that. So this is just geriatrics who watch this stuff. They're tuning out, which is not good, even though they're not even a valuable demographic. But they're fucking tuning out. But it's only old people who watch this shit. So essentially what we're doing is we're just watching the slow motion just death of of all these networks. And I'm not really sure how it plays out. I don't know if, do we need them? I guess everybody can just go social media to TikTok. I guess that's where people get their news now. 25 to 54 year old. If you don't watch MSNBC because you have even some of a brain. You go and you watch TikTok or you go to X or Blue Sky, right? And again, what they're doing with MSNBC, this is nothing more than an attempt to just hold on to as much power, status, and most importantly, money. Because Joe Scarborough makes $11 million a year. Mika makes eight. I think between the two of them, these are rounded figures. I think between the two of them, they make $20 million a year, which is what Anderson Cooper makes on his own. They make $20 million a year, these two clowns that, who have like a, what, a one or two hour show in the morning on MSNBC? Are You Garbage gets more viewers. They literally get more viewers for an episode, the boys at Are You Garbage, shout out, than MSNBC. They don't make $20 million. Where is this money coming from? I mean, it's not my business. I'm not a shareholder. I know that MSNBC is for sale. Maybe we set up a GoFundMe. Maybe we can buy it. I don't know. 